Hey guys, Cruel Blind Wave. I'm Eric. I'm Rick. I'm Calvin. I'm Aaron. And we're here with a little bit of a different reaction than something we've usually done. Uh, Star this Wars. Is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, who'd have thought? <laughs> You're so right. Uh, this is the Disney Gallery Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 8 Behind the Scenes Special. Um, have you guys ever checked out the Disney Gallery Mandalorian stuff? I have not. Aaron, you think you've watched it all, haven't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I watched several of them. I have a few that I, I really liked, and some other ones like, oh, that was cool. But I really love season ones, mm -hmm. uh, especially season one. Season two was just kind of like one episode for the first seven, uh, and that released like oh, I don't know a week after the finale. But it had nothing to talk about the finale. They wanted to keep, you know. And by the way, if you haven't seen any of the Mandalorian, please. Go watch that before you watch this. This uh, you have, so much spoilers. You have been warned at this point on. They didn't speak about the appearance of Luke Skywalker at all because they were trying to keep everything hush hush about it. So uh, oh, it is now finally. How long has it been since? At least six months. Been, in, I don't uh, know, almost a year. A year. Uh, finally, we get to see uh, some details and some behind the scenes stuff about uh, the Luke Skywalker appearance. So. I'm excited. Um, we th we're all going to watch this anyway. We thought, let's do a reaction to it. I suppose there is going to be a full length of this, too. So you can go check out that. There's a link down in the description and the pinned comment. So yeah, the full length is down there for people that are raw, raw riders over at our Patreon. Um, also, if you're checking us out for the first time, hi, we're Blind Wave. We do reactions. You can go and check out our reactions uh, to every episode of The Mandalorian and all things Star Wars, including a... Uh, series where Calvin and Rick are going through Rebels for the first time, too, so mm -hmm. check that out. We also have Star Wars Visions coming out very soon, and then after that, they got Book of Boba Fett coming out soon, so hit the subscribe button, stick around, because we uh, we love Star Wars here, and we're going to continue to talk about it, but now, we're talking about Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. Mandalorian. I feel a lot of connection to them. <laughs> you meant so much to them, and they want to see it continue with the future. Season 2 is and so good. feel like it's all connected with consistency. One X win. <laughs> there was a character that came in at the end of it, and in the script it was written as a character called Poku. What? I think Poku was a character in the prequel trilogy, and I was like, well, how is this like this? Is it from here in the corner? Ah, oh, this is all a secret. Oh, okay. That's Dave's favorite character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's some sexy art. If there's one person in the galaxy that you would be okay taking this kid from the Mandalorian, it's gotta be Luke. Yeah. So every move you're making. Wrong lightsaber. One step, step ahead. When I instantly went from being thrilled to Sorry. Scared, there was a real responsibility to storytelling there. Yeah. to have feel organic in the context of the Mandalorian. Because none of them have ever really encountered a job. And that double has a that good silhouette of Luke. Yeah, yeah, he's got the jaw. Because we realized watching it that you're kind of in denial. No matter how obvious we <laughs> right. you do not think it's going to be him when that hood comes off. Like, that shot was the one of all the shots that yeah. had to work. We wanted Mark here, because he is Luke Skywalker. I was contacted by John and Dave, uh, inviting me oh, to come wow. over and take Dude. a look at Mandalorian. They <laughs> said they'd love my opinion. <laughs> that should have been a giveaway right away. <laughs> <laughs> he often will do unveiled cameos as, uh, as voice talent for other Star Wars projects. Bulio. How do we thank you? <laughs> Win the war. <laughs> so Duff, and we showed him, this is before anything had aired, we showed him oh. that first episode with the reveal. Wow. That and far he back. was really captivated by it. He really liked it. And so we told him what we were thinking of doing. Wow. It is pointless to resist, <laughs> my son. It just wow. his beard. <laughs> yeah. In other words, if they're Holy saying they shit. want me to do this, how can I say no? <laughs> An experience and for those guys, guys, right? He came out and he was thrilled. And I think a, a, a huge weight was lifted off of John's shoulders to, <laughs> when that happened. That when you have those yeah. feelings that uh, where it feels really compelling, you know that you're onto something. And especially to Mark. You know, it'll let him come in there and show Luke at this moment and let it be a celebration and also a culmination of a two season arc about the, the journey of this little child. Okay. You've been emotional this whole time? Yeah. I have like water coming out of my eyes the whole time. Yeah. The tires is a big part of what we do on this show. And then they replaced them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they skimmed them. It's pretty easy to see what that is, but all the new render tools and processing power is making that get better very rapidly. 
as then as flawless. Yeah. Now, because it was the first time we'd used this particular uh, technique, we also went online and found interviews that Mark gave, anything we could find to build up the data for millions of pictures to our yeah. wider face. It was, it was felt as though, you know, we really needed to kind of rely a little bit more on the tried and true <laughs> techniques rather than deep fake. So we wanted to really kind of focus in on uh, the de-aging process. We had two actors, I'm so we had happy Mark Hamill, <laughs> and we also had a picture double named Max. And we shot both on set. We had also shot Max previously with all of the cast. We want to find somebody who, who looks like Mark Hamill. <laughs> we can't say he has a little Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah. He has a pretty good, like, he young does. Mark Hamill yeah. look. Yeah. He watched me do the scenes, I watched him do the scenes, so we tried to match each other. I would look at the monitor, and of course the image is small, but I thought, oh my gosh, he looks more like me than me. How <laughs> 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 they do the voice? Very That's what I'm curious about. Things. I don't know. I have theories. Matthew Wood. <laughs> it's the hair transition that is uncanny. It was a very long day, as you can probably imagine. It's television, um, man. Part yeah. of the secrecy, too, right? Yeah. Sure. You don't they want to have him walking around on set. No. Best chance possible. Oh, so fucking cool. To <laughs> I said to the guys, I said, look, you don't have any worries for me. I learned a long time ago how to keep secret. I mean, that empire secret, I had to keep it for like a year and a half. <laughs> but that's before social media. I said, all it takes is one person. Everybody knew that Rosario was gonna be a soap. Everybody knew that. <laughs> creating artwork. Oh, oh, oh fuck! I want that! That's really cool. Effects. That were the character of Plo Koon. What? Temporary they visual effects? effects they, for they paid Koon. people to do this, to keep a secret. If you don't do it, oh, yeah. Dave likes Blue Goon, that makes sense. That's so we had funny. A oh my god! <laughs> ...placed on the actor, and I'm thrilled because for people to be able to discover that in real time was mad. That was one of the greatest moments. Oh boy, this really works. We've now got to change his face. Only now. <laughs> and then it's the force. <laughs> He's just playing with toys, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to have a rare look at what he would be doing prior to establishing the Jedi Academy. What's interesting about the, the Luke costume from Jedi is it's not the color you think it is. So we had to make all these decisions like, well, it's really brown, but it yeah. looks black. There's something very dramatic about this. So glass is 40 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> and people had a different impression of, is the likeness on target? And so we would yeah. experiment with different things. We would change the hair. That's we would why put I think the, the deep fake works. We would have it uh, fall further behind his neck. And all of this is to test, to wow. see when do we go too far? When does the Which hair is right? Uh, Which stop? Yeah. Digital faces are the most difficult visual effect in the entire world. It's, it's because, because it's not every technical. human is an expert in faces. Right. But we have a pattern we look for. Yeah. Every aspect of this is important, right? The buildup of X-wing to lightsaber to lightsaber color to fighting style <laughs> to lightsaber to color. Yeah. I love the black the and white screens. Builds the anticipation that says, "I want this." I'm proud we got it at X-Wing. Yeah. <laughs> Original music by Ludwig. And that's the first time you could hear any John Williams music. Let's never underestimate the importance of John Williams. <laughs> because that's, the that's part of what makes Star Wars Star Wars. But something people didn't realize is that his voice isn't real. Like, oh, it's synthesized. his voice, the young Luke Skywalker voice, is completely synthesized oh, using uh, 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 an application called Respeecher. It's a neural mm. network, basically. You feed Matthew. But talent without training is nothing. Wow. You know, it makes you realize that it's, it's like becomes harder and harder to trust your own eyes and ears when it comes to this stuff. You see, this is me. Boba Fett. We were alluding to no one that there's like a blockchain Boba identification Boba that everybody has. I wonder if certain images or videos that are released in an official capacity could have some kind of a stamp with it. Something, when you see something that you know it's real. When we were talking about the scene and we were getting into it, and I said, well, you know, if we bring Luke in, you get R2. <laughs> and John was like, R2. <laughs> <laughs> and so I immediately did a sketch of R2 <laughs> talking to Grogu. And I was like, the moment we want is the one that's like when Wicket meets R2. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Oh, so it is. It was a lot like that. Wow. Life. It was already intense because it was already, <laughs> my God, here's Mark Hamill dressed as Luke Skywalker on our set in a starship hallway. And I was fine. 
And then R2D2 rolled on. <laughs> Me too, man. And I just had a moment where R2D2 was there, and I that's when I broke down. <laughs> For a generation of kids now, Grogu represents something that R2 represented to me, that Yoda represented to me. You know, it's a magic, yeah. special character that, you know, we take very good care of, I hope. I just thought when I, when I was watching the episodes, I said, I've got to meet the child. And it, I'm the only one that has any experience with his species. <laughs> 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 to see the reactions, that was a high point of my whole career. That was definitely on. Oh, you know, watched ours. On those moments <laughs> you could count on one hand. John sent me links to reaction videos, which were just, you know, we have one of the high speed ones. see these things in the audience. To see grown men. <laughs> okay, they're talking about us. Their heads up, man. Ah, oh, fuck, it's great. We love the fans. I mean, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. They are the most loyal, passionate group of people that. I've ever encountered. A lot of Star Wars fans are of, of this age where they're not the Luke Skywalkers anymore. They're the parents now. And I think that um, what's nice about a good myth and a good story and, and certainly the world that George created is that there's room for all the archetypes of every age. And I think that's part of why it becomes an intergenerational experience. And just as my father brought me to the first Star Wars, there's a lot of people who are sitting on the couch with their kids. Yeah, you're literally things. doing that. I've been, right. I've been doing this. <laughs> we haven't gotten a Mandalorian yet, but I think they're gonna love it. Hey, was that 40 minutes? It's too short. Oh, that was great, man. Oh. That was a fantastic watch. It, it's fun listening to the people that work on creating it who are also fans and enjoying it. Like, I like the John Favreau story being like, I was good, and then R2 rolled in. And I started like, <laughs> I <know>. yeah, <laughs> I, I love it. So, it, okay, it makes sense. They were using blue screen behind Luke, so they can't have R2 be blue, so he's actually painted green for yeah. being on set. And then, yeah. then they corrected him. him. So I was like, why? Why? And then at one point, they had uh, at least a, a double holding uh, Grogu. Luke's episode four saber at one point. It was like the Anakin saber. Well, Wait, Calvin was very upset about it. <laughs> Depending on what they were doing, that could have been Plo Koon. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, if they have to, like, wait, wait, isn't that Aunt, uh, Luke's, Luke's yeah. over there? Like, Maybe, oh, well, yeah. we're just using this Maybe. for a prop for whatever. It also could have just been, like, hey, we're blocking things out. Yeah. You have a lightsaber. Yeah. Do we have a lightsaber? You know? It could have been the stuntman that was <laughs> yeah. holding the, the other saber. I, would, I, I just always try and notice things like that, because in episode three, there's a point where Anakin and Obi-Wan are actually holding the wrong lightsaber. Anakin is holding Obi-Wan's and Obi-Wan holding Anakin. Because they actually cut out a whole section where they switched lightsabers and were fighting. Mm -hmm. But that was also when they kind of had the idea that Hayden was going to be using a red lightsaber. And they changed that because, well, we're fighting with lava. It's not going to look great with having red on red. So we'll have them both be blue. And then when that happened, they're like, well, you can't tell the difference really between the two lightsabers. Cut the whole section out. But there's like two shots where it's like a close up and he's holding the lightsaber. And it's like, that's the wrong one. Keeps the wrong emitter. So I always like those little, like, I don't know, remnants of things that... So I don't know if that would, would be the case here. Though. There's no way that he would also... Oh, we have still another lightsaber. Have, well, I'm just saying, like, the story for another time. How how did Ma Maz get that lightsaber, Aaron? You never know. I guess. <laughs> Are we the highest viewed reaction in that episode? I don't know. Let's sure. look it up. That's one in season two for <laughs> okay. now. What's the, what's the chances that John Favreau sent our reaction to Mark Hamill? Well, Probably, I mean... I. Pretty high. I, we met someone who was like, hey, I know you guys from the reaction stuff like that. Like, I think uh -huh. it's a fairly good chance. I like to think that when he's talking about the grown men cry. <laughs> and screaming their heads off. <laughs> these grown men cry. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of grown men <laughs> oh, crying. Though, you know? That's yes. the thing. I was tearing up throughout the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Me too. It was crazy. I am. I'm like, I'm just fucking nerd. I don't know. <laughs> Man yeah. nerd, yeah. <laughs> what else do I say? I don't know how to do it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like what John was talking about. I'm like, well, it's silly. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't I can't make understand sense. why yeah. it is the way that it is, yeah. but it just makes that connection to you deeply as a child. And... It's so rooted in childhood. But I also love what he has to say about, you know, Star Wars being what it is, the music style that it has, not having something that's the contemporary, and it can be timeless so that kids of every generation can enjoy that it's an but intergenerational a kid experience today isn't going to have the same exact Luke Skywalker reaction but when they grow up and then this older Grogu could show up they're going to have that feeling you know sure so yeah it's a difference between like that time period in between and everything yeah. too like I doubt that my kids when I get to this because I've been going chronologically through things yeah. I don't think when we get to this point 
they're gonna be like, oh, oh, it's Luke, you know, because they would have they just, would have just had him yeah. in Return of the Jedi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then we're getting into this, so, but yeah, no, it's just that time period, and it's also crazy because like, well, Mark Hamill is so much older, like, yeah, is it gonna be, is it gonna be Mark Hamill, or what are they gonna do? And they take that off, like, oh, look, it's Luke, yeah, you Max know? looked like, pretty good, he did, yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. I thought it was good. Um, that's going to be hard trying to find, like, hey, we need someone yeah. to stand in as Luke Skywalker, but we can't cast them as Luke yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. So sure. how do we find this person? Put a like casting Luke call out for Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, you just can you imagine the, the feeling? Because they said that they put him for a character that wasn't Luke. Yeah. yeah. And then can you imagine the feeling, like, okay, so... We need you to be Dan. Here's what's actually going to happen. And they're like, <laughs> and he, asked, he must be like, what? Like, you, you're never going to think. You're going to be Luke Skywalker. What? Yeah, the feeling, the re- and then maybe like the stress, <laughs> yeah. the responsibility, you know. Like Sam Whitworth talked about that when they said like, "Hey, well, we want you to voice them all." He's like, "I can't." Like I know, I'm a fan. I know how much I'll hate the person that tries to do that, <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you want me to hate myself? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also really appreciate it. They spent a decent amount of time talking about. Look, we use this technology. Here's the danger of this technology. The great power. It was great inter- I wasn't expecting them to talk about yeah. that. Honestly. It's important though. Like, and he's right. You know, when you know that the you know when you know there's a magic spell being put on you, you're more likely to see through it. You know, sure. It, people need to know that this stuff is coming and it's going to be. Like well, yeah. you said, it's going to be. Completely well, how much I mean, look at the way the world is now. Yeah. With, like. Things that are so outrageous, but so many people still will believe them. Sure, exactly. sure. it's a thing with like and that doesn't that. have people with actual people's faces yeah. and their voices talking. It's a, the thing with the internet, things. where people just see something on the internet, oh, I saw it on the internet, it must be true. It's like, well, and then yeah. you just see a video, like yeah. you said, you saw one where it's like, oh, it was uh, Obama talking. Well, it, it was specifically stuff. the voice. I had no idea that it was completely synthesized. I thought, well, maybe Mark performed the lines and they treated it they put it through filters but it was complete yeah, synthesization it's, it's crazy yeah. there's a Witcher 3 fan DLC that yeah. uses Geralt's voice from all the rest of the game yeah and it's incredible but they were able to Google is able to take like they, they took Obama just because they're trying to say look people are going to do this to presidents so we're going to do this to a president we have a hundred hours of his speeches we can make him say anything we want and they literally would type it out hit enter and he would speak yeah, you know, so that's going to happen. But uh, and then you get people who are like, oh, I heard Obama say this. It's like, yeah. but did you like make sure you're aware of this stuff? And I like the idea though of like having some way where like here's the code within the image. Yeah, it's of a really video interesting technology where you can problem. see the edit editing Blockchain. of it. And, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like a signature, some type of like watermark you can have. So that's like, look, this is fake. This is real, and how important that is. But bad actors won't care about that so how do you well they won't care that? and what can you make that can't be broken exactly yeah so, I, fitted. I thought it was when they started getting to I'm like you know what this was the right decision talk about this for a little bit at first I'm like this seems weird to talk about yeah. and then I'm like okay it well I guess it's, it's good that they do that from uh, their approach it at the very least sense. yeah at the very least it's giving an awareness like hey make sure you're aware of this because yeah. not everything may be real maybe now you can tell but give it a few years give it ten yeah. more years I mean that's what John said like you can tell now. It's it's plain as day. Some some videos that you see in the future, it will be indistinguishable, mm-hmm. and it's sooner rather than later. And I, I thought that was cool. But I think the, my favorite part of watching this was they knew this was going to be a hard sell to get people to think this is Luke Skywalker. I, I guess it was kind of either subtle or it's an unconscious thing. Like I realize everything they did. But how on purpose everything they did was. Sure. From the X Wing to oh, okay, black and now, white you, now it's black and white, and now outfit. it's a lightsaber. Okay, it's a Jedi, and now it's green, and I can see his glove. And But he's, like he said, like people won't believe it until he actually does it. Because yeah. I remember, I watched it, we all watched it together. You can watch our reaction. We immediately go, who, who goes with one X Wing? It's got to be Luke Skywalker. But when he's coming through and he does it, you see us all go, <laughs> is it really him, yeah. you know? So, it's, it, it's... And then especially when they said, like, don't put John Williams until there. Because I've seen a lot like of, like... That. A lot of people take, like, edits and... Like, they do fan edits with you know, re music and... Yeah, the music that, uh, that... Alexander, I think is his name? Uh, I can't remember the, the right now. But the, the music that he put was a, kind of a new theme for when Luke was going through fighting in the hallway and stuff like that. And I've seen the edits of people taking, like, I'll take the Force Awakens trailer music and put that there. And yeah, it matches and it fits and it's really cool. 
but you needed to it's a magic trick use that music right there right when you see the face because i think they realize this face isn't perfect yeah sure the entire time well, they're talking about dave even says it's not just about the face it's everything else we did too yeah and it's a magic about, trick and they knew it wasn't super convincing they talked about yeah. all the different ways that they could do yeah. it and they're like well we didn't have you know the toughness with lighting with this yeah. with deep fake and the problems with this with de aging and the problems with one this day to that. shoot yeah. Yeah. that's the crazy thing too that's the crazy <laughs> like, thing mm-hmm. i like what they talked about with like you. keeping a secret and it's like, well, the Grogu secret was in the first episode of the yeah. season one. This is in the last episode of season two. And and that's the last. And they, I, the idea that they did a Plo Koon, like, that was amazing. Like that. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> so funny. They covered but, the covered well, like, Max and everything. And, and they you had the plan for that, it from episode one, season yeah. one. That's what I was going to say. Like, that's saying insane. about, like, the craziest thing that you were saying about, yeah. I think it's crazy that if they brought in Luke, uh, Mark Hamill, yeah. like, hey, we just want you to get you some thoughts on this. Look at this Grogu. And it's like, all right, well, here's what we're planning on doing. Yeah. And that, I think that... I think one of the reasons that Mandalorian that people really seem to like Mandalorian more so than like the uh, sequel trilogy mm-hmm. is that that there seems like okay well, we have a plan of where we're starting to yeah. where we're going sure. that a lot of people complain that the sequel trilogy mm-hmm. didn't have so yeah. I really like that if, that if that's what they were doing like okay here's Grogu what's his story well here's the arc we have for him yeah. and this is where like I don't know what the next season of Mandalorian is going to be but there might not be a Grogu on there at all you know yeah. or sure. you might not see Grogu for who knows how long but like it's not this was Grogu, this, it's this, is, this is the arc we're doing yeah. after this arc's done. Then what's next? And I like that. And I'm confident that they know exactly where it goes and have known for a very long time. Sure. I also like the idea of uh, like I know Dave Filoni has different thoughts than uh, uh, John Favreau mm-hmm. on like Star Wars and prequels and all that yeah. different stuff. But the the thing about like we have Luke Skywalker coming in, and he's like we both were like. Yeah, if one of this. them said no, they, would they wouldn't like, have done Okay, well, let's yeah. talk it out and yeah. see what else we can come up with. But because they both like agree, and I like that idea of like, you know, you have people who like are big fans of the original trilogy or big fans of the prequels or just fans of all of it or whatever, but getting those people to come together and like, okay, what will make this Star Wars? And if they can all agree, then that's probably the best solution yeah. on it as a whole, you know? Because yeah. then it fits in with people who love original, people yeah. who love prequels, people who love whatever, and it makes it fit where like everyone's going to be happy in the long run. I, I love the specific thing that Dave brings to the table. It's not just that he learned at the feet of George or that he's been telling these stories for so long. He knows how fans react, and he used it against us with that Plukun thing. Yeah. Plukun. He knew that people knew that he loved Plukun and that, oh, motherfucking, he put it in there, you know? Because yeah. he's already put, they, apparently Ahsoka leaked and all these other leaks that are happening. He knows that's happening. He knows fans are going to... They, if they hear about Plukun, they're going to believe it because they know how much I like it. And he played us as like a fiddle, you know? Yeah. I love... Because John and, Favreau, he yeah. wasn't that type of fan. He was an original trilogy fan, but Dave was there with the prequels. He was, you know, there while they're actively trying to have these interactions with fans that John kind of was, has been a separate from, you know? And if they both get leaked, you need one that's more believable than the real thing. Yeah. Right, and I love the idea of the Plo Koon well, because it was like, damn it, he would try to bring back Plo Koon as yeah. his favorite character. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever. All right, I don't yeah. know. So it's just, a, it's just a very specific thing that Dave can bring. I, I like the, uh, I like the look of. I guess not the look, but diving into what would be Luke Skywalker's sword fighting techniques, and yeah. the idea of like, well, here's what Ahsoka would be like because she was in the Clone Wars and da 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 da. But then you have. Luke Skywalker, who had some training with Yoda, and we see like he's progressed from this point in the New Hope to this point in Return of the Jedi. Like he got but better at what he was taught. Yeah, but what's but not, next? Like he's not going to be, you know, Anakin and Obi Wan yeah. from the prequels. But what would he be like? You know, and I, sure. I, I like it because I felt it like felt like Luke to, Skywalker doing it. It did. Like he learned know? to stop dragging his left leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of what it was like. <laughs> yeah. You know? And just in like runtime, there's a lot more examples of Ahsoka fighting than there is of Luke sure. fighting. Yeah, she's usually very acrobatic. And There's a Luke lot of moves. And only moves. had Vader to fight. Ahsoka had Inquisitors, yeah. and Saj, and Grievous, and other Jedi to spar against. Anakin to teach her. Yeah, you know. Um, and a war. You know, I, I keep coming back to like you know the the face. I remember when we watched it. It's again they put all that effort into making that moment as magical as possible, despite the the flaw of what the face looks like. You know, I still feel like it's flawed. I, I agree, mm-hmm. but I will say I think when we watched it, we're like, yeah. "Oh, that's what they went with." We were just yeah. all enamored. No, like, but the, oh, yeah, the moment there's there. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. you know, he's here. But then when you look at just the face, yeah. and you ignore all the exactly. rest that you did, it yeah. is like, man, that looks kind of messed up, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like something's wrong. Yeah, with it. and I remember one that day saying like, "Oh, I think they probably should have went with the deep fake," 
And I said, tomorrow there's going to be a deep fake online that's going to look better. And the next day there was a deep fake online that looked better. Granted, he put a deep fake over what they the work did. that they did. So it's just a, you know math at that point. It's going to be better. But that was by a channel uh, called Sh uh, uh, Shamuk. I, I looked it up to make sure I got his name Shmuk. right. Shamuk. Shamuk. He does uh, deep fakes. He did deep fake on the Tarkin they did, and it just looks better. He did like solo with Harrison. Is that the Ford. YouTuber they hired? They Lucasfilm hired Shamuk okay. like a couple months ago, like under the radar. People were just like, "Hey, why haven't you put out videos?" And in a comment, he said, "Well, Lucasfilm hired me." And people were like, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I mean, it seems like they might be going. I mean, this guy has he does deep fake for you know for uh, as a hobby. It, now he's doing it as a profession at Lucasfilm specifically. Sure. Is this something that's well, going to... Well, he can to... work with the guy they locked in the closet they, for... They, they could, man. Yeah. <laughs> However long, you the know. The mad like, scientist. Hey, you, yeah. Landis, I think it was his name. Like, Landis, you do yeah. this, and then bring in Shamuk, and then he'll do this, and then and look at what we get got. And get Max, you know? and, you know, we could very much get more Luke Skywalker Maybe. stuff. Maybe. And later, if, if you know? they did, like, a Luke Skywalker series, well, that was be insane sure yeah it's, it's i don't think they will but if they they did the, the they... thing is is that like like you said like we're getting really close to it being perfect sure it's, it's still not perfect now like the, you know the examples they had in ant-man you could see even then the ant-man one it didn't look that great ant-man two it was pretty good you know yeah sure. but it's also millions and millions of dollars in more than one day there's yes. also things too where it's like well maybe there's not luke skywalker that they need what if yeah. there's something with like an Ahsoka story, and you need like Force Ghost Obi Wan to come through. Well, you don't have Alec Guinness anymore, yeah. or something oh, like. Yeah. Maybe you need to kind of like create that, kind of like they did with Tarkin, or like they did with that. Carrie Fisher. You know, you know fans are doing like, that now, but yeah, I think so, that as this, you know, I feel like in terms of a story, we have to have a scene. Eventually, I don't know where it takes place, but Ahsoka has to speak to Luke Skywalker. I feel like it has to happen. I feel like Ahsoka can tell Luke how Anakin lived. And he can tell her that he came back. You know, I think it has to happen. That would be a <laughs> damn it. I know. <laughs> My voice are yeah. I know, but it has to happen. Oh. And I think that you know, you get Shamuk in there. Everything that we saw here, and that might be something where I'm not going to be like, oh man, I wish his face was better during a scene like that, because that's sure. going to carry such emotional weight. Yeah, it's going to carry more you, weight. I, than so you don't want someone again. taken and, out because yeah. they're looking at like, ah, man, the face is bothering yeah. me or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and you know, and you can't do this trick too many times where it's like, build, 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 and then you cheat with John Williams. <laughs> sure, music, you know, sure. You sure. can't do that too many times until people are just like, it doesn't look like yeah. Mark. And Hill. it limited how much movement he had yeah. in his face, how much conversation they shot. Sh they did shots from behind where he's talking and you can't yeah. see him moving so much. Now, well, and even the voice of it, like he's not emoting a lot. In his dialogue, he's not, there. No, he's very kind of like the calm presence while everyone else is freaking out. But he needs if you're going to yeah. continue this kind of stuff. A corridor digital, and that can work a, there. Did a video it might not work too. in like another situation like that. Uh, corridor crew, corridor say. crew. They yeah. did they yeah. did a uh, a video where they deep faked. They hired their own actor, and they did some really cool stuff. Like uh, you know, one thing that they did that they actually got from when The Rock was Scorpion King. Like, the visual effects guys back then, they did not have this technology. No. Sure. And they were like, what do we do to make this make look at all good? And one thing they did was they had, like, deep fire shadow. So whatever's happening on the background is happening on the character, and it kind of just melted. Corridor Digital, uh, or the Corridor Crew, did that with their deep fake, where they kind of had the spark behind Luke, and that would match their deep fake, and it looks really good. Uh, the only problem I have with their the thing that they did at all was they had Luke do this weird, like move as he walked in oh my guy sucks but everything else was a hundred times better than what mandalorian did just on the face everything sure. else was fantastic as we saw yeah no i don't know i mean having more of those things right now it's it's interesting because we're in a time of like there's there's lots of star wars stuff coming out we're doing stories in between different segments mm -hmm. and we're so many years later than so many of those segments. So it's like, well, how do you tell more stories? Like Mark Hamill said, like, you got James Bond, you got his license to kill, and now you never see another story yeah. from him. Sure. Like, how do you get more stories from about Luke Skywalker? Even if he's not the main focus, yeah. if he shows up in it, and you want to be like, oh, man, look, I can connect the dots as to, maybe not exactly what he did, but kind of where he's at at different points in time. But having that kind of uh, deep fake thing to be able to help, like, 
Otherwise, like, what do you do? You just hire an actor. And just yeah, yeah. An actor play. I mean, that's what them. he thought was going to happen if they did anything between uh, Return of the Jedi and yeah. and anything else. They were going to hire somebody else. But in some of those situations, like, you know, what if you wanted to use a Force Ghost Obi Wan, right? Because we go, we dove sure. through like Clone Wars where you have Steve Stanton <laughs> do the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you go through and you have like here's this Force Ghost of this person or that person uh-huh. or whatever it is you want to do. And there are people that have passed, and you want to do well, like Carrie Fisher. Like, how do you get young Rogue One, you know, Carrie Fisher? Or how do you have yeah. that actor who just passed? Do you just yeah. and you only do it back in again, with permission you know? of like that the family the and all state, that kind of stuff too? Yeah, sure. I, I, yeah. I, I, I agree with that's that. That's like the danger they talked about yeah. because you know, like the what James happens when we have weird. like I'm gonna yeah. have Batman be played by Marlon Brando, and you can't stop. Well, yeah, like, you know? yeah. How would Alec Guinness feel about exactly? So maybe you can't do. He's still getting paid, right? <laughs> yeah, but he's is. not under any obligation. You know? <laughs> no, I know, but like, despite Lucasfilm owning his likeness, yeah, there's there's a, is it ethical? For me, I also feel like there's a difference John between like about the James Dean story we heard, where like there's just a movie that they were working on that James Dean was gonna star in, uh-huh. and it's not tied into like like the Star Wars universe you have these characters that people have grown up with and yeah. when you see someone like oh is that okay I guess that's this person but if you can get the likeness and the permission and all that it just thing, the, the it movie you're push talk- it so much more you know? the James Dean movie you're talking about was using the controversy to market itself yeah they yeah. knew that people would be upset and that's how they got people talking yeah. about their movie but it seems weird to be like you know what we're gonna hire James Dean yeah. For just a brand new movie, yeah, it's well, yeah. not like a sequel to something he had already been in. Or yeah, I mean the danger is like if you can just use the best actors from the last hundred years. Yeah, there might not be any more best Great actors. actors. Yeah, yeah. and oh, I can yeah. just create their voice from a re-speecher, make yeah. their voice be what I need it to be, put their likeness in there, hire a double who's not yeah. who's kind of acting but doesn't have to do most of so it. So you don't have to pay him as other. much. Depends on what it is, you know. It's just it's crazy. I don't know because Max. We don't even get Max's full name. It's just yeah. Max, it's just Max. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, Shmook has on his channel a, uh, a solo Harrison Ford deepfake, right? So you have Alden Ehrenreich's performance. And I, thought did a, I thought he did a fantastic job. Sure. But when you see a Harrison Ford digital mask put on that performance, it's, like, perfect. Yeah. So which way it's, should they go? But here's the thing. Alden Ehrenreich would no longer be in that movie, like, as his face. Like, yeah. Like, Andy, Andy Serkis talks a lot about being Gollum and how he's, like, it's just kind of a shame that, you know... I wasn't really in the movie. My but here's my spit. Yeah. Or here I'm in, maybe I can play Smeagol in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. But he's like, my friends all were like, well, where were you? He's like, dude, I'm all over that movie. Yeah. Nah. One of my biggest <laughs> roles or most you know? performances, no one knows me. But for. like, yeah. Alden Ehrenreich was the star of Solo, and it would be weird if he's like, oh, yeah, but you never saw my face. Sure. Like, yeah, you saw my performance. Like, like those are the two things. It's like, do you yeah. do something like what Solo did, yeah. where you have Han Solo as a different actor because he's younger, mm-hmm. um, and... Or do you do something more of like this one here? The the main difference there though is that in the solo one we didn't see young Han Solo. We never saw Solo before that point, so yeah, we can yeah. kind of in our head go that guy like Jake Lloyd grew into Hayden Christensen. Exactly. Just believe it. Yeah. Even though you, you, you can and, see Jake Lloyd today and you, he doesn't quite look like you and McGregor <laughs> turns yeah. into Alec Guinness, exactly. right? That, that's sure. The, the in nineteen years. Get, yeah, that's the transition <laughs> you got to get to. But in this one here, you have like well, here is Mark Hamill, and yeah. then here a couple years later, yeah. Who's he look like? Oh, same age actor, but completely different guy. Yes. You know, well, like fair, they're a little different. Things. He looked a lot different between four and five. He did. Sure, yeah, he did. But and what they're talking about? But he was about, the same actor, though. He was. Right? Like, like what they're talking about? Like in every scene, Mark just has a he, like he had that face where no matter where he's lit, he just looks different. It's just the contour of his face. Uh, I, I've heard that uh, video game modelers have a huge problem with Mark Hamill. They can never make their model look like Luke Skywalker. People's always freaking out. Like, why does it look like Luke? It's because he looks different in every scene. Yeah. Like, it's easy to do Harrison Ford. Everyone knows what Harrison Ford's like, but Mark didn't have quite the uh, well, and, quite the career Harrison did. Yeah. You know, and his look changes, and it changes so much drastically. That trilogy. Yeah. So yeah, I I sympathize that it was going to be so hard, and they had to work. They I, mean, I didn't realize how much work they put in to that, especially the. Uh, how much thought they put into the level of reveal. Well, because I've watched reactions. It's probably the the one episode of things I've watched the most reactions to. And everyone it's the realizes point, right? that it's Luke at a different point. Some people like don't even realize until... Well, grand, some people do reactions, have no idea what Star Wars is, and don't even... Who's this? <laughs> you know? But 
I would say 40% of people made it all the way to the reveal. Like, oh my God, it's Luke. But at a certain point, there's like a kaleidoscope of people that realize it happening. And that's yes. Oh, it's the X-Wing. Oh, yeah. look at that outfit. The glove. Oh, look at the glove. Yeah. Look at the green lightsaber. Look at, yeah, whatever it is. And they just <laughs> pick a point. Like so many people, even like the, the cloak going down the figure and then the, lights, you know, the lightsaber, like, this is Ahsoka, you know? Uh, I do recommend the Disney Gallery. Uh, if you guys haven't seen any other episodes, go Dude. back and watch. The, the first episode is the rest of the season. Yeah. Sure. The first season's third episode uh-huh. is... I think it's a third. It's like one of my favorites it's they the did. Best. It's the round table conversation. Oh man, it was so good. And the conversations and like the uh the explanations of like prequel stuff too in there and Dave, stuff was it, so good. They have all of the, the main directors uh around the table and Dave Filoni, I don't know how they got on the conversation. Dave Filoni explains Duel of the Fates to everyone. And it's like nothing you've ever heard no, before. It's really good. And you're like, holy fuck. Why did George just say that? <laughs> you know? Everybody's always <laughs> pissed off at the Phantom Menace, but you hear Dave talk about it, you're like, of course he had to do that. No. It's, it's pretty amazing. So it's really go, good. Go check those out. I mean, if, if I had known it was going to be that good, I would have reacted to that. But it's behind the scenes stuff. So I always figure, yeah, I don't know. But when I heard this was going to be about the one thing that I wanted to see in this season's behind the scenes. Sure, yeah. Like, how do they yeah, do I it? have to react. It's crazy. Like, you were saying about, like, all the things they had to go through to try to get the Luke Skywalker reveal uh-huh. to feel like Luke Skywalker, for people to be like, there's yeah. Luke Skywalker and whatnot. But it's crazy. They had to do all that while also doing it all in secrecy. Yeah. With, like, the minimum amount of people they had. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they had to so pick crazy. a day when the rest of the crew was on location mm-hmm. off the set. To have like half yeah. a dozen people working. Yeah, I need that Flo uh concept art. That art. Oh, yeah. that looks the so one in the yeah. hallway with the. I want yeah. Dave's sketch. Like that's like a what if episode. Uh, the, like for uh, Marvel, Marvel's what if? That's Star Wars what if. <laughs> Dave's sketch of uh, Grogu and uh, R two. Yeah. yeah, dude. He, there was a person I I met at Star Wars Celebration, who had like they had like a big picture, kind of like what Calvin has. Mm-hmm. And he's been getting different autographs and stuff all over, and he ran across Dave Filoni. And Dave Filoni autographed it and just sketched a little Ahsoka yeah. real quick, just yeah. right there. And he's like, oh, this is cool. like, so treasured now. <laughs> we to, yeah, I mean, we had to remember Dave comes from animation. I mean, he worked on so much stuff, but Avatar yeah. Last Airbender yeah. and then, of course, got into Clone Wars. Like, I have Clone Wars issue number one, the comic book, and the cover is painted by Dave Filoni. Like, he talked about all the time whenever he first started sitting down with George and the writers of the Clone Wars – Every meeting, Dave is interacting Dueling. and talking, but painting, dueling, and then they would take those and be like, "All right, do this," and that would be just episodes of the Clone Wars. So, yeah, I think the most impressive thing about the episode is the balance of it, mm. where the episode is not about Luke Skywalker. It's not like they're, they're doing all this effort to, you know, have that moment of Luke be great, yeah, but not overshadowing what it's really about. They mentioned yeah. the separation yeah. between. Yeah, it's a they didn't want to steal the drama. And I'm glad that they at least mentioned, if they were going to mention anything else, the moment of separation between Grogu and Yeah, and, Dick. and I yeah. liked, uh, I think it was John talking about, like, the different ages groups of people who yeah. love Star Wars and that some of the people who have been, like, growing up with it now have, like, their kids going off and mm-hmm. it's oh, a separation. Off to it's, like, relating to the Mando yeah. and Grogu and, like, that kid-father kind of, like, relationship they have. And then Grogu being, like, this is where you got to yeah. go. It's time for you to leave, you know? And, well, like, yeah. as a parent, you could kind of relate you to, can. like... All right, I gotta let my kid go. Because you kind of have like your parent dying with Luke and Yoda mm-hmm. in the old yeah, trilogy, sure. Yeah. Or your grandparent. Yeah. Well, and even uh, you could kind of relate to Obi Wan a little bit, but then he kind of comes back. So I don't know. Yeah. Yoda also kind of comes back too. He's like, Arr, Arr, sure. What you doing? I mean, it's <laughs> <a> sacred text. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I think I it's, it's a lot more relatable to so, like. <laughs> I think it's a lot more relatable to have like this old figure dying in bed yeah. next to you rather than someone being cut in half and disappearing. You know, it's... I like, wonder... Sure. This really made me think, because especially Mark Hamill was like, well, certainly I need to interact with this thing. I know its species best, you know? I'm the only yeah. one that knows how to act with this puppet. Uh, it made me think story-wise, too, how weird it must be for Luke to train this guy, you know? He's, I'm sure Grogu, as he's getting older, is running around, <laughs> you know? And he's just thinking about Yoda. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm... Like I'm trying to think of like you know scenes in my head where oh, I'm gonna fucking tell this guy that's why you fail, you know? <laughs> because that's when Yoda told me I fail. I'm gonna get him, you know. And Yoda's ghost in the background hitting him. Stop it, you know. I'm gonna look like all right, lift this up. And Grogu's like, mm? I was like, damn, god damn it. 
Go like right. that. Do you think he you says bounce two- on your hand and lift nine rocks and bounce them on your toe? Yeah, and I'm gonna be in this backpack on your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think he says too old to start the training? Maybe. <laughs> that would be crazy. He's like, He's like fifty, 50 years, years old. old. He's like frustrated trying to training. get like you know little Grogu who's just starting to speak. Like okay, force be with you. And he's like, there's just a way. Like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, like, what, like, <laughs> Grogu sounds like. Do they all talk like that and stuff? Like, we had Yaddle, wasn't it, in, like, yeah. the prequels, but I don't think she ever talked. Not one. Yeah, she did in the books and stuff. Uh, some people theorize that just the way Yoda's species works, their mind thinks in that direction, so... They reach they a conclusion say yes. before they finish the... Well, you know, pro- but well, then there's, like... Like, if he has another language that... Yeah. He, is before basic yeah. or something that he learned. Yeah, maybe. So I, I'm not really sure, but I mean, I feel like just as a storyteller, I would do it. I don't know. Sure. It'd be like uh, the language thing could work too, where like if he understood another language, mm-hmm. you know how like in uh, Spanish, like you would have like of in different spots sometimes. Mm-hmm. And like if you just say it in English, the way that it's written, it has a little different well, sound yeah, to it, it than it like, would like this is how you well, say it in English. It's Latin, and you get the actually. subject after the verb. Yeah, and you do a lot of that kind of stuff. I so. think it is, like, Yoda speaks as if he's speaking a better, or a worse translated version of Latin, where he would switch around those things, so. But I don't know, like, is there a canon reason why he does that? Is it his language? Is it the way the species yeah. thinks? Well, Grogu talk like that, yeah. having grown up with not other species, like, I don't yeah. know what, we don't really know much about Yoda's history. Mm-hmm. So, like, will Grogu even talk like that? Yeah. Or will he grow up with people talking just basic and stuff and like in our, you know, we don't like in our in, in the English that we speak, we don't really have a idea of gender applied to words, but other you know languages do. It's and they think about that. It changes the way people think depending on what language you speak or how you're raised. So I don't know. I mean, it seems like Grogu at one point could have spoke. I mean, he's fifty. I don't know, yeah. but it feels like he regressed. But he could still communicate with Ahsoka. So I'm I'm assuming. I mean, we know that he could do that with Luke. But will he ever get that voice back, or will he always just be like a telepathic speaker? I don't know. Get the voice back? Yeah. Did like, he have did, a voice before? Did he? I don't know. Did he? But oh, okay. at the very least, he could speak, and he regressed, he said. And when I say speak, at least form thoughts to communicate to others, mm. and then regress. I would said. not want to be the one to have to cast his voice. His voice. I feel like that's a tough one. It is a tough one. I don't know. I'm trying to think, but no one... Steve Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> D. Bradley Bailey. Uh, yeah, you get this guy. Get him to do it. Well, I think that's about uh, all I have. I did like the. Uh, again, we we already talked about it, but using Fantasia as their uh, example of technology <laughs> gone wrong, and I love that it's just well, we're Disney. Let's so just, let's just reference. I, I just I wonder if John like actually just randomly start talking about Fantasia and they're like oh thank god we are Disney and we can use that or if you had another example and they said Did I change it or if there was a happy accident there maybe yeah, I don't know <laughs> I guess all I have left is that I just kind of miss behind the scenes features like this one thing that streaming yeah. like things for streaming have gotten rid of DVDs and Blu-rays, Blu-rays behind and the we're like well we have all this extra space what are we going to do commentaries and you know? easter yeah. eggs that's a big thing about like yeah. having that well, Blu-ray behind the scenes deleted scenes mm-hmm. and all that it, it happens sometimes like it does. Uh, Barry does it yeah yeah I mean it, it not as comprehensive I guess like uh, my favorite behind the scenes ever is the Lord of the Rings trilogy oh like my it's gosh. it's like a film school in itself it's well a worth movie in itself I've literally watched it more than six hours. Of the movies. But yeah, it's easily ten hours of all now three see, together. Eric, I got good news for you. Mm. Neil Breen has a seven hour. Okay. So <laughs> can you get can you get Mandalorian on like Blu-ray? I don't right? know. Like I know it's on Disney Plus. Can you buy it on Blu-ray? Because if you can, then you probably get a lot of behind the scenes. I haven't looked it up. I don't on know. Plus. I and if you did, up. I guess it wouldn't surprise me. But I also would just be like, why well, have Disney Plus? Yeah. And maybe different regions. But this is what's happened though. It's it's. Like, we have these all whole separate shows for them now. Disney Gallery or uh, the movies that made us is, like, behind the scenes to movies that didn't really have comprehensive behind the scenes, you know? Yeah, it looks like you can buy the season one Blu-rays. Are they official? I mean, that makes sense. Yes. Why wouldn't okay. you do that? I mean, you're going to make money. <laughs> I'd imagine they would. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, 
Uh, but speaking of the movies that made us, there because in here they have like we have this mad scientist ILM guy. Go check out if you're interested in this type of stuff. Go check out the Jurassic Park one because that one has a really interesting story about the guy that was convinced I can do digital dinosaurs, and everybody's like, no, 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 we're we're on stop motion. We're doing this with no digital dinosaurs and he was like this badass like rebel at ilm and his boss said do not show that to steven spielberg and he was like Fuck that guy. You know? <laughs> so we did one shot and then whenever they're going to show some dailies he just fucking pressed play in front of steven spielberg and i think it was kathleen kennedy that was like what's that and they're like oh i am working on a digital uh, dinosaur and his boss was sitting next to him like son of a bitch <laughs> and steven's like is interesting to continue with this and then that's what happened you know so and that that guy like the documentary really likes him because he's just he doesn't give a fuck you know <laughs> he's like this badass nerd <laughs> that even like you know 30 years later he's I don't know he's like, like the Dr. House it's really special and whenever I heard ILM Mad Scientist I thought of him so go check out the movies that made us Jurassic Park one it's so good hmm. that was a long conversation that was a no, long thing. Yeah. I loved it. It was it was uh, interesting uh, behind the scenes. Yeah. I can't wait for like more Mando and yeah. Book of Boba and stuff, and see mm-hmm. what else they have with a lot of that. Me either. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Hope you enjoyed the discussion, uh, and hope that you will hit the subscribe button because again, we have visions coming up that we're going to be talking all about. That we are anime fans. You can check out some of our anime reactions too. And if you're not an anime fan, but you are a Star Wars fan, this is going to be a great introduction, I think, uh, for people into that style. Um, and then, yeah, Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian Season 3. Rebels. 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 We have uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, too, which is exciting. Ahsoka. And uh, what else is coming out in terms? Uh, there's the uh, Obi-Wan series. Acolyte. Acolyte. There's um, the... Uh, there's going to be a Rogue Squadron movie. movies that are coming out. Like, a lot of stuff. Yeah. And we'll either cover them in reactions or reviews, depending on yeah. what it is we can do for them. Yep. So, anyway, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, as Eric said, make sure you subscribe because we cover a lot of Star Wars stuff here. Uh, Live action, animated, Visions is coming out. We have anime stuff here. And we have all all other kinds of stuff. What if we've been covering from Disney Plus? Yep. Uh, Other superhero shows that we cover here. So subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys hopefully next time.